In July 2013, 30,000 state prisoners went on hunger strike in California. The strike lasted for two months. It was the second one since 2011. The prisoners were protesting solitary confinement, what many people consider to be a form of torture. In solitary, your world is a gray concrete box. You spend between 22 and 24 hours a day alone in your cell. Your bed is a concrete slab with a thin mattress. Three times a week, guards shackle you and take you to the showers for 15 minutes. For exercise, you pace around another concrete box. Sometimes a bit of ceiling is uncovered. This is the only time you'll see the sky. As a punishment, the use of solitary confinement is often an arbitrary decision. Nearly 3,000 people are held in Pelican Bay State Prison in Crescent City, California. Over a third are in solitary, most of them because of quote-unquote gang affiliation. But that's a meaningless phrase. Gang affiliation might mean reading a book by a Black Panther, or drawing Aztec patterns, or even having a tattoo. But Pelican Bay isn't alone in this. Around the country, you can land in solitary for your art, your reading, your beliefs, your gender status, your sexual orientation, or your friends. Women have ended up in solitary after reporting being raped by guards. Transgender prisoners are often put in solitary just for being trans. Prisons say this is for their protection. There is no limit to how long someone can be held in solitary confinement, and very little evidence is needed to justify holding a person in solitary indefinitely. At Pelican Bay, hundreds of people have spent over a decade inside. According to the UN, 15 days in solitary confinement is torture that can cause permanent psychological damage. William Blake, who's been in solitary in a prison in New York State since 1988, said, Dying couldn't take but a short time if you or the state were to kill me. In SHU, I have died a thousand internal deaths. Solitary also enables abuse. The Dallas Six were inmates in Luzerne County. In 2009, they contacted human rights groups to complain about torture by guards. According to the Six, in the privacy of solitary, guards would starve prisoners, beat them, and strap them to restraint chairs for up to 18 hours at a time. In April 2010, guards beat and restrained a fellow prisoner. The six covered their cell windows to draw the attention of a superior. In response, guards beat them bloody and the prison charged them with rioting. The prison didn't explain how people can riot if they're locked alone in their cells. According to a lawyer for the Center for Constitutional Rights, prisoners in solitary are never granted parole. Because of this, a person sentenced to between five and 20 years can often spend the full 20 incarcerated. Prisoners' best hope for staying out of prison after release is maintaining bonds with loved ones while they're inside. But solitary destroys families. Those in solitary aren't even allowed contact visits. It was only after going on a brutal hunger strike that Pelican Bay inmate Gabriel Reyes got to hug his daughters. It had been 18 years. Many prisons even ban phone calls for those in solitary confinement. Personal letters may never be delivered. Books may be taken or withheld. This past November, U.S. officials told United Nations Committee that, quote, there is no systematic use of solitary confinement in the United States. But as of 2013, this country was holding over 80,000 people in solitary confinement, some of whom were only 14 years old. Because of press and protests, there have been tiny reforms. Pelican Bay is reviewing the prisoners isolated because of gang affiliation. In September 2014, a memo by New York City's Correction Commissioner Joseph Ponte promised that Rikers Island would stop locking teens in solitary by the end of the year. But it's not enough. 80,000 humans remain alone in concrete boxes. When will they be out? <laughs>